how we scaled our premium cataract and lens replacement surgical volume over the past 11 years. So what do we mean by scaling production? What is the definition of scale of production? By economies of scale or scale of production, we mean the growth of a firm or an industry resulting from expansion of the volume of productive capacity, which leads to an increase in output and a decrease in its cost of production per unit of output. So let me tell you a little bit about my background. I've been in private practice in Austin, Texas since 1997. I've been in the same practice and we're privately owned. We currently have two surgical ophthalmologists and two medical optometrists. We have two locations. One location has a three room OR and a LASIK suite with a Visix eczema laser and an IFS femtosecond laser. Our practice is premium cataract and premium lens replacement focused. And we have about 50 staff and we do not co-manage. So if we're going to be discussing how we grew to where we are today, I think it's also important for you to understand where did we start? Where are we now? How did we get to where we are today? And finally, what's next? So where did we start? From 1997 to 2011, my first 14 years in practice, our primary focus was on scaling up LASIK surgery. We were early adopters of presbyopia correcting lens surgery and started using the crystal lens in 2004 and the restore and resume lenses in 2005. We had two to four ophthalmologists performing comprehensive eye care. We had two opticals between two office locations. We did accept vision plans. We had no optometrists and we did what I would consider low volume cataract surgery. I did about 300 cataracts a year. We did have an ASC with one operating room. Now, in 2012, we made the decision to invest in the LensX femtosecond laser for cataract surgery. And this was an inflection point because in order to make our investment in femto profitable, we had to scale our cataract surgery volume, specifically our premium cataract and lens replacement surgery. Now in 2023, Looking back, there are five key decisions or choices that we made to grow to where we are today. Number one, I had friends in other cities who had their own surgery centers. And when I spoke with them, I learned they were probably doing much higher volume than we were. So we visited their practices to analyze their process. These other practices were more efficient and more productive than ours by far. For example, I would be doing six cataracts in a half day and they would be doing 15 to 40 cataracts in a half day. Through this process of observing the processes of other practices, we realized that we lacked three things. Number one, the team. Number two, the process that we had was inefficient. And number three, our infrastructure was not what it needed to be. Number two, we retained the expertise of professional marketers in cataract and refractive surgery. In 2012, Mike Malley, who is the founder of CRM a Refractive Marketing Group, helped move our marketing to a much higher level via TV and 30 second online spots. That was masterful surgery today, Shannon. Thanks, John. Speaking of masters, how long does it take to master golf? I'm not sure any golfer truly masters the game. Do you think we're becoming masters in vision? Masters in vision? Well, I'd say we're definitely at the top of our game. And as a golfer, don't you just love that name, masters in vision? I do love it. And I also love these green jackets. So do I. I just don't know if they go well with our scrubs. Now, let's talk a little bit about YouTube. What I do, how I do it, why I do it, and what I avoid. I post cornea, lens, and anterior segment videos to YouTube at a rate of about one video every two weeks. It's pretty much just a hobby that I do on weekends. What do I post? Any eye surgery content 
that I believe will add value to the viewer, whether that viewer be a potential patient anywhere in the world or a non-physician or even the most elite eye surgeon. Why do I post? I want to educate the general populace to alleviate fear and misconceptions about eye surgery. We use several of these videos for our own internal patient education and for education of our staff. How do I do it? I just try to answer all the questions that our patients ask us through a video format. And if our staff has a question about a concept or what we do, I'll create a video to educate our staff so they're more knowledgeable about the procedures we offer in our practice. What types of videos do I avoid posting? I avoid posting any video that has the following characteristics. If it's self-serving, or if the video suggests that I'm virtue signaling. Finally, I don't ask people to like or subscribe to my channel. I think that they're smart enough that if they find value in what I post, that they'll like or subscribe naturally. Now, making videos is pretty time consuming, but I have a genuine interest in making videos to share information. I think it's helpful. It's helpful for me to kind of crystallize my thoughts. And it's also helpful for those who watch the videos to get useful information that's unbiased. What kind of impact has making YouTube videos had on our practice? Hi, my name is Luigi Russo. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Ray from Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I'm Steve McIntosh. I'm from Santa Barbara. I found Dr. Wong on YouTube um, before I had a before I had to undergo cataract surgery, I was trying to figure out which lenses to go with, and um, his videos were super informative and led me to a, you know my decision on which lenses to choose. And um, I did have some issues with my cataract surgery back home, and um, chose to reach out to Dr. Wong. Got back to me right away, and um, and here we are, and we're correcting uh, correcting another surgery and. Um, finally got cataract taken out of uh, my left eye, which desperately had to come out. And, uh, so far, everything's been successful. And uh, I found Dr. Wong on YouTube, and um, I did a lot of research. I met with doctors in the Valley in Phoenix and uh, didn't feel very good about them. So I made a few phone calls, and the uh, office was very... Uh, welcoming, had a very good plan for me to come into town, do the surgery for both eyes. I did a panoptics lens in the left and a vividity lens in the right and had a great outcome. I wanted to find the best doctor in the country. I watched your YouTube videos. I was convinced. And when I came here and had the surgery, it was like it never even happened. There was no pain. There were no bloodshot. I see better than I did with Synergy, so I'm extremely happy with Dr. Wong. I think that YouTube works because it has searchable content. If someone somewhere has a question about eye surgery, success rates, risks, different technologies, they go to Google or YouTube. If I have a question about how to or why I'm having a particular question or medical issue, I don't go to Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. I do. Go to YouTube or Google. Number three, as we grew as an organization, I had to get better as a human and as a leader. Just as I sought to learn from other ophthalmologists who had created very high performing surgical practices, I identified people whose leadership accomplishments, views, and principles I admired and respected. I found it fascinating to learn the principles and practices by which these individuals live their lives and influence those around them to build great teams and organizations. The individual that has had the most influence on my growth and development as a leader is Jocko Willink. He's a retired Navy SEAL who started and runs a leadership consulting company called Echelon Front. He runs this company with his partner, Leif Babin, who is also a retired Navy SEAL. They teach 
The principles on this poster, which include the four laws of combat and the five mindsets for victory. Jocko has a YouTube channel that he posts to regularly that teaches leadership through the lessons that he learned in the military. Echelon Front also has a great YouTube channel that has content that I find very informative. Jocko and Leif and the team at Echelon Front host a three-day leadership training course called The Muster, during which they teach people from all industries about leadership and what works and what doesn't work. As physicians, we know that medicine is challenging. But what I've learned over time is that the leadership of other human beings is even more challenging than the practice of medicine. In fact, the leadership of other human beings is, in my opinion, the most challenging and humbling responsibility and skill that we all need to learn in order to run a successful business and to live a successful life. We believe so much in Jocko, Leif, and their team at Echelon Front that we've sent our top leadership to their three-day leadership conference called The Muster on three separate occasions. And I can foresee us doing this again in the near future. Long story short, I highly recommend that if you want to learn leadership, start listening to Jocko. Number four, we began to refine the process of utilizing technology and utilizing first principles thinking in our surgical process. From 2012 to 2021, we used Aura and the femtosecond laser for premium cataract and lens replacement surgery. We thought that patients preferred the latest and greatest technology and that we needed to differentiate ourselves from the competition by having the laser for cataract surgery. In 2021, we visited Dane Brooks' practice in Plano, Texas, Brooks Eye, which is about the same size, structure, and staff size as ours. Amazingly, he was doing double our surgical volume while charging what we were charging and having great outcomes without using Aura Intraoperative Aberometry or the Femtosecond Laser. So, guess what I did? The next day, I got home from visiting Dr. Brooks' practice. We changed our entire process and language. Laser cataract surgery and laser lens replacement became premium cataract surgery and premium lens replacement. We eventually stopped using the Femtosecond Laser and Aura for cataract surgery within our practice. When I saw how efficient Dane Brooks was in the clinic and the operating room without the femtosecond laser and aura, we streamlined our process. So what happened when we stopped using femto and aura and removed the laser from our cataract and lens replacement practice? Our volume doubled within the next year. I changed my schedule to see only surgical evaluations. I referred all our long-term patients and post-ops to our optometrists. We made sure that we hired and trained great optometrists that love doing what we do and made sure that we took great care of them. So what are some take-home points? Analyze what is really necessary to achieve great surgical outcomes. Ultimately, what matters is great preoperative testing, screening, and counseling which involves an educational process for patients that makes it easy for them to choose a premium IOL using educational charts and videos, a highly trained staff that is motivated to take great care of patients and create a great patient experience, surgeons who evolve, grow, expand, and perfect their surgical skills to produce the very best outcomes. All cataract and refractive surgeons who want to perform at the highest level, in my opinion, must learn how to perform intraocular lens exchange, reverse optic capture, and intrascleral haptic fixation in the absence of capsular support. So how do we manage the patients that are unhappy despite all of the above processes going perfectly Preoperative testing was done perfectly. Surgery and post-op care was done perfectly. And the patient's still not happy. Have a clearly laid out policy on what you are willing to do to help these patients see well with possible intraocular lens exchange, LASIK, PRK, AK, or a combination of the above. 
what we do is we charge one price up front that covers all touch-ups for one year after their initial surgery. So if these patients need a lens exchange or a LASIK, they don't pay for those touch-up procedures for a period of one year after their original surgery. Importantly, we listen to our small but vocal 1% of patients that are unhappy and work extremely hard to help them reach a point where they know that we've done everything humanly possible to help them see their best. The fifth choice that we made to scale our surgical volume was to expand and improve our existing real estate and infrastructure. So we added exam rooms to existing space. We updated the exam room equipment. All our equipment is brand new. We upgraded the diagnostic equipment. We expanded our ASC that was built in 1999 from one OR to two ORs. We upgraded our LASIK and ASC equipment. Once we outgrew our existing space in our surgical center, we began looking for new space. We eventually built a new office and ambulatory surgical center, which has three ORs. And then finally, we renovated our remaining office space and are currently completing an internal and external complete restoration of what was a new office constructed in 1999. Our goal is that both offices resemble one another and they're both modern, contemporary, and high-tech. Finally, you might ask, what's next? What's our five to 10 year plan going forward? Well, we'll continue to hire more doctors and more staff, and we will teach them the leadership principles that have proven to grow and build a successful organization that takes exceptional care of our staff and our patients. And then we'll teach these principles for the practice of medicine and business to the next generation of doctors and ophthalmologists in training. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Building and scaling our premium cataract and lens replacement practice has been very simple in concept. However, it's required an enormous amount of hard work from a very dedicated team that we have carefully built over the past 11 years. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.